Okay, here we're gonna look at magnesium deficiency in cannabis plants. So magnesium is a vital nutrient, something some growers may not initially think about, uh, but when they see a problem, something that may come up on the list. And be sure to check out some of my other videos on looking at other deficiency symptoms in cannabis. So let's get on with magnesium in particular in this case. So magnesium, well, why does a plant even need uh, magnesium is often you know, a question growers may ask. Uh, keep in mind that magnesium is a mobile nutrient, meaning it can move through the plant and it has a dominant role with the photosynthetic process. So it's associated with processing in the chloroplast, uh, that green color, that real nice green color we typically associate with plants. That's part of, of the responsibility of magnesium, where up to 35% of the leaf magnesium is actually located within those chloroplasts. Now, magnesium is involved with the Rubisco enzyme activation and activity, and that is very important to initiate that carbon binding with the photosynthetic process there. Now, the magnesium does impact the chloroplast structure and the synthesis, so it is involved on a micro level, but we can see macro effects in the plant. The deficiency leads to reduction in the plant's ability to utilize carbon dioxide assimilation rates and reduces rates of biomass formation. And that can re reduce the yield um, in the end result and also in the simple plant biomass, both negative aspects that growers want to avoid. Now, a trial was done. So kind of a unique thing here with cannabis. Uh, the cultivars, wife, the pleased plants are, you're going to see about 80 days old. It's grown in a greenhouse to help maintain consistent conditions. And you're going to see a control plant that was fed a balanced fertilizer and then a test plant it was fed all the nutrients at optimum levels except the one being studied. In this case, it would be a magnesium deficient plant. So specifically, here's the cannabis plant that we can see. Uh, see, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, zoomed in, uh, at least another image that I found, this is kind of what you're looking for. That slight yelling of the lower leaves here, uh, but this is kind of what you're looking for. The veins of the plant will remain that typical consistent dark green color. What you're looking at is in between those veins, you have the yellowing. So you have this kind of dark green veins, but then you have that yellowing that is occurring. That yellowing on lower leaves in particular is characteristic of a magnesium deficiency. So in cannabis, there can also be uh, some stippling, some brown spots that you kind of see going on here, at least a little bit here in the lower leaves. Uh, they may not turn completely yellow. So this is a great example of how sometimes the plants don't follow the textbook exactly because this is an actual uh, cannabis plant that was particularly fed magnesium deficient fertilizer. You kinda, so you kind of get to see firsthand what, um, what may occur or how the plant may react. It may not always be that textbook. Here you're noticing you have those brown spots that are kind of developing. It's another kind of indication of a potential magnesium deficiency. It tends to be first seen in those lower leaves. So if you're seeing brown at the top, that might be something else. Here we're looking at that older leaves, those lower leaves. It can progress up the plant um, if the problem is not corrected. So it's important to recognize, oh, it's occurring at the lower leaves, could be magnesium. Let me start to feed some magnesium fertilizer. So a lot of growers ask, well, what may that look like? We have uh, some different options. So applications should be made uh, repeatedly and on regular intervals until the problem stops progressing because it might take a little while for that to build up in the plant. Don't expect a one-time application to kind of fix the problem. I've provided some suggested fertilizers and suggested application rates for a two by two foot area, uh, but follow the recommendations on the package that you may be purchasing. Epsom salts is one, and that's kind of quick and easy. One to two tablespoons per gallon, and that can be applied as a soil drench or can also be applied to the leaves directly. The advantage is it's very easy to get. The drugstores have it. Just go out, grab it, uh, and you can apply it the same day. It only supplies magnesium, and there's some sulfur um, also added there. There's a CalMag product. This one's by Botanicare. But you want to start at about an ounce to a gallon. Um, and the, the advantage of that is it has a magnesium but also it supplies the plant with some calcium that could be an issue, especially if you're growing in cocoa coir. The kinds is of the options prevented here that is the most expensive, uh, but it does um, have the ability uh, to help correct that deficiency. And especially if you have a calcium issue, it can help correct that as well. The last one I can include here is dolomitic lime. So if you're growing in an outdoor application uh, or you need a pH correction anyway, if your soil tends to be a little bit on the acidic side, you need to add lime. Uh, you can add uh, dol dolomitic lime. This is uh, 
Calcium Lime, this has not quite as much uh, magnesium with it, but Dolomitic would be a great uh, option there. Uh, it's free, I say, with the lime because that lime naturally is high in magnesium. But it can only be used for soil applications that you're trying to raise uh, the pH. So you've kind of got to balance your options in what particular growing situations you're looking at. So hopefully this provides a little bit of that kind of that real world kind of example of how the plants may not always follow the textbook, but gives you something to look at or helps you identify a potential deficiency that you may be having.